we're only looking at objects that go straight up and come straight back down, right? It's hard to draw that in, in a way that makes sense here, but we're gonna look at objects that go straight up and straight back down. We are not examining objects yet that fly through the air both horizontally and vertically, right? We'll get to that, but right now we're just thinking about objects that go straight up or straight down. Is that understood? Okay, and we're gonna consider objects that are in free fall. What would it mean to be in free fall? Yeah, what do you think? Isaac, go ahead. Yeah. Just, just falling. It's not connected to anything, yeah. right? Or it might be connected to something, but it's in free fall until the bungee cord hits, right? You know what I'm saying? If you go bungee jumping, right, you're in free fall until you reach the length of that bungee cord and then something else happens. But you are in free fall um, when you're not, yeah, nothing is slowing you down or speeding you up, right? You're just, you're just gravity at that point, okay? Um, so, yeah. Okay, um, this question here was a, a, a big topic of discussion a long, long time ago between Galileo and Aristotle, okay? And Aristotle stated, right, and his, his belief was that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. Can we seem to agree with that? Right, does it seem like it would be intuitive to make sense? Think about the time period, right? Would it make sense about what they knew back then that probably heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects? Yeah, the Tower of Pisa experiment, right? So they go up to the Tower of Pisa. Galileo drops a cannonball out of steel and like a wooden ball, right? Same shape, but completely different masses, right? And what happens? They fall and they hit the ground at the same time, okay? So I have a little video there that we could watch, but it's, it's something, but we're not going to watch it today. Um, it's, it's not... Uh, it's, it's not real historically accurate, you know, the costumes and stuff. But maybe if we get time later, I'll show it. Um, but it is, Galileo has said, no, 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 it doesn't have to do with mass. It has to do with their shape and how much air resistance really affects them, right? Because if I would take a crumpled up piece of paper and a flat piece of paper, would they hit the ground at the same time? No, what? but they weigh the same right? They have the same mass, but what's different about them, right? Their surface area and their shape. The amount of exposure that a flat piece of paper has to air resistance is much different than the amount of exposure that a balled up piece of paper would have to air resistance. And so his argument was that it's less about mass and more about the shape, right? If they have the same shape. And so the answer is no. Heavier objects don't fall faster than lighter objects. Um, if we can exclude air resistance or if we, can, if we can negate the factor of air resistance, that would be by putting them as the same shape, right? Making them the same shape. Now, in our perfect physics world, right? In high school physics, we live in a perfect physics world, which means a lot of the time, like 100% of the time, we get to ignore air resistance, right? We get to ignore environmental factors in our problems, Right? We assume that we're living in a perfect physics world. That's the perk of high school physics, okay? is that we get to live in the perfect <coughs> physics world. So we get to negate air resistance most of the time, okay? like all of the time. So essentially in space? Mm, well, in space, gravity is different. So on Earth, we think gravity is 9.8, and so we get to negate any air resistance that happens to that. It means, means we think everything's going to fall at the same rate. So here's our acceleration due to gravity. So acceleration in the vertical direction, always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Always, always, always. So for all vertical problems, acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. Okay? All vertical free fall problems, acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. And it is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, you might sometimes see acceleration due to gravity listed as a lowercase g. It is the same thing. Okay, I don't think there's a need for you to rewrite your equations, but you are welcome to do that. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second, but you are welcome to rewrite your kinematics equations if you want, because now we're going to observe the vertical direction. And so instead of x for our displacement, we, we might use y, right? We might use y as our vertical displacement variable. And so what I mean by that is that if you want to rewrite your equations with y variables, we could, right? We would still have velocity final equals velocity initial plus g t, right? g would mean gravity, 
right? Acceleration due to gravity. Our second one might look like this. Y final equals Y, oops, equals Y initial plus VIT plus one half G T squared. And our last one might look like V F squared equals V I squared plus two G Y final minus Y initial. Right? If you want to rewrite those equations on your equation sheet, you are welcome to. If you feel like you can make that application switch without rewriting them, no problem. That's fine with me. Okay? Um, you might even see it written as V Y final, right? And V Y initial. That just tells me specifically I'm working in the vertical direction. So those subscripts that we see and we use a lot have application to them, right? They're not just they're not things we need to memorize. They're things that we should be able to see, right? Big, big variables, V, that means velocity. I see an F, that means final. I see a Y, that means vertical. So that tells me it's final vertical velocity, right? I can work my way through that variable just by knowing what those subscripts mean and how we apply them, okay? So if you want to rewrite them, you're welcome to. If you don't want to, fine with me. Let's try some problems here, right? There's no, no more else... Nothing else that we need to learn. We already know our kinematics equations. Now we're just going to apply them in the vertical direction. Okay? So this says, suppose a ball is dropped from a tower that's 70 meters high. How far will it have fallen after one second, two seconds, and three seconds? Okay? So here's where we come into that, um, when I talked about drawing, drawing a motion diagram. Okay? Here I am on the tower, and I'm going to have a ball that starts up at the top and it's gonna fall all the way to the ground. Okay, that's about as complex as your motion diagram needs to be. But I do think it's important to have one. All right, if I'm gonna do the problem, I'm gonna set my origin, right? I'm gonna draw my crosshairs, but where do I like to draw them? Where the motion starts from. So I don't wanna make the ground my origin. That's not my preference. You can do it if you want, not my preference. I like where the motion starts from, be my origin. So you will see me continually draw those crosshairs. So that tells me that's where my motion is starting from. By doing that, I automatically know that my initial position is zero, right? Because it's starting at the origin. That's the point of me doing it that way. So that yi or xi is always zero. Are we clear on that? Okay. So it's a matter of, of simplicity for me, right? I can always assume that yi or xi is equal to zero. Okay, it's asking me how far will it have fallen? So does that mean, am I concerned with the 70 meters yet? No, no. I am not concerned right now with how tall the tower is. I want to know after one second, where is it, right? How far is it, has it fallen? So what variable will I be solving for here? Y, -F. y final. Y final is going to be my question mark, right? How far will it have fallen? All right, we've got a couple other t context clues here. Can I solve these three in one equation? One second, two second, three seconds? No, I will do this problem three times, okay? So the first information I'm given is that T equals one second. There is another piece of information here. Any idea what it is? Okay, I do know acceleration, good. And I'm just gonna call that A equals negative 9.8, good. That's never gonna be given to us in the problem. It's just gonna to have to be something that we know, okay? It's dropped, very good. So if my ball is dropped, that means the second it leaves my hand, what is its velocity? Zero. It's zero, only for a second, okay, really a millisecond, a little bit, right? Until it can start accelerating due to gravity, its initial velocity is zero. So that's a big context clue that we need to understand. If an object is dropped, initial velocity is always zero. What would be the opposite of that? What would be the alternative to being dropped? Being thrown, right? And so thrown would tell me it's either being thrown upward or downward, and then we assign a direction to that. But this one is just dropped, and so our initial velocity is zero. So now I think we have all the information we need. Now we have to examine our kinematics equations and figure out which can I use. Okay, so any thoughts here on which kinematics equation we could use? The second one, I would agree. I need to solve for y finals. That limits me to two or three, 
And in equation three, I would need final velocity. I don't have that. Okay. In all reality, I could solve for it. Then go use my third, but I don't want to do that. I want to save my time, right? So I'm going to say y final equals y initial plus vyt or vit plus one half a t. Oops, not t. I know my t is one squared. Make sure we put that negative 9.8, right? Here's, here's one other thing I want to talk to you about. Which direction does gravity always pull? Downward. So regardless of the direction of my object, acceleration will always be negative 9.8. Even if the ball's going upward, acceleration is still negative. Because as the ball's going upward, what's it doing? Is it speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Slowing down. So if I'm moving positive direction and slowing down, my acceleration is still negative. Okay, so always negative 9.8. All right, very good. Um, let's see here. So y final comes out to be about negative 4.9 meters. Agreed or disagree? Okay, so after that first drop, if my whole tower is 70 meters, after my first drop, I'm only about four meters below, right? At one second, I'm only about there, five meters. I haven't traveled very far yet, okay? Let's try the second one. After two seconds, how far have I gone? Can I use the same equation? Yeah. yeah, I should, but I, now I'm just going to sub my time, okay? So my y final is equal to, do we expect it to just be double? No. No, and it's, not, it's because of that square right there. So no, we're not going to expect it to be double. Um, I can drop these two out of the equation, right? Because I have no initial velocity still. One half negative 9.8 times 2 squared. And so I get y final equals to about negative 19.6 meters, I think. Okay. What does it make sense to us that our displacement is coming out negative? Yeah. We need to rational ration through that or whatever, rationalize through that. What why is my displacement coming out negative? It's falling down. Okay, so I want a more specific answer than that. Not just because it's falling down, because I'm going to what? You're going away from the origin in the negative direction. Okay, good. Away from the origin in the negative direction. I'm ending up below where I started. Period, right? I started at the top of the tower. Negative tells me that I'm ending up below that. Okay, if it was horizontal, I'd end up behind that. But I'm ending up below that. So now I'm at negative 19.6. So I'm about here after two seconds. Do you see my gap got bigger between one and two? That's, that's the whole point of acceleration, right? I'm not falling at a constant velocity. With every second that goes by, my object is getting faster, which means it's covering more distance, right? So that gap will get bigger with everyone. All right. What about my three seconds here? I can use the same equation. Y final equals one half negative 9.8 times three squared. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think we're somewhere in the forties here. 44.1 meters. And so that means after three seconds, I'm about here, right? A little over halfway. Okay, questions with how we work through that? Simple enough? What, what would I do if I did want to find out how long would it take for, the, for it to reach the ground? I would put 70 or I would put negative 70, right? Because I don't want to know how long it would take to go up. I want to know how long it would take to fall 70 meters. Yeah, Evan, what was your question? That was it, or you were going to go with negative? Okay, sorry. If I wanted to find out how far it traveled, I would say negative 70 equals 0 plus 0 plus 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and just solve this just for fun because it's so much fun, okay? So that gives me negative 70 equals negative 4.9 t squared. Should my time ever come out negative? No, and more specifically, can I have something equal to t squared that's negative? No, so we got to make sure that should have been a red flag. Had you plugged in positive 70 there, you would take positive 70 divided by negative 4.9. You would have got a negative number, and then you would have been expected to take the square root. No good, 
right? So red flags in math tell me something went wrong with my sign earlier, okay? So make sure we're not just ignoring those red flags and turning them positive, right? We can't always do that. Um, so let's see, square root of that gives me about 3.7 seconds. Okay, or 3.8 if I'm really looking at rounding, but that's about where we're at. Does that fit our pattern? Right? We know after three seconds, we're already at 44. We don't have to fall too much farther there. Okay? All right, very good. Let's look at the net 19.6 meters. And so now we fall in an X problem. It's the same situation, but it says, suppose the ball from the last problem is thrown downward with an initial velocity of three meters per second instead of being dropped. What would its position be after two seconds okay give me a range of positions here where do you think um, give me just a range between this and this meters just shout them out what do you think 30 and 40 okay between 30 and 40 meters we think somewhere around there yeah, close to 40. okay let's see what we think all right first of all it says we're thrown downward that means initial velocity is equal to what Negative three, good. Negative three, because the velocity is going downward. So we add the direction there. Um, we always know why i is equal to zero. I really don't bother putting that in my list. I also don't bother putting in acceleration in my list, but if you want to, you can. Position, so I'm looking for y final. And my time is equal to two seconds. So can I still use the same equation we used on the last one? Yep. Yep, so y final equals y initial, but I can't drop this one out, right? I'm going to have to go negative 3 times 2 plus 1 half negative 9.82 squared. Mm -hmm. So I got y final equal to negative 25.6 meters. Right? Mm, did you take negative 3 times 2? Because it's VI times time. That's all right. Okay, does that match our expectation? We thought it'd be a little farther down the tower, right? And it was, right? Because at 2 seconds in our last problem, it was only 6 meters based on that starting amount. Okay, that feel pretty comfortable? Okay. All right, let's try this one. We're gonna tr I'm gonna show you a couple things and then I'm gonna I'll walk you through a little bit of a shortcut here, okay? So it says a person throws a ball into the air with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Okay, so here's the object's starting point. It's gonna get thrown into the air. Um, calculate how high it goes and how long the ball is in the air until it reaches his hand again, okay? So we're gonna say how long the ball is in the air. We have two questions we have to answer here. We need to do them separately. We have no way of being able to put them in the same equation, okay? That's, a, again, that right there is, is as specific as my diagram needs to be. I can draw the way down if I want. I don't have to, but I don't need to draw anything real, real elaborate here. But I did draw my crosshairs, okay? Throws the ball upward, so that means VI would be equal to 15, and positive 15, because it's going upward. Calculate how high it goes, which means we're solving for what variable? YF is my question mark. And that's the only information it gives me, supposedly. But I know a couple other things. I always know about Y initial. Again, I'm not going to write these in my list every time. I always know about acceleration. But I know one other piece of information about the ball at the top. What will, a, what will an object do at its peak height, at its highest point? It pauses for a second, right? It will stop moving before it comes back down. And so I know here that final velocity is equal to zero. Because how much of the motion am I examining? Am I examining the full path right now? I'm only examining the way up. So we need to be really careful about frame of reference. What am I examining? I don't have to always examine the full motion. I can, I can just look at the first half or the second half or whatever I need. So I'm calling this final because this is where I'm stopping my examination right now. I'm only focused on the way up. So 
Um, based on this information, which, which one should I use? My third, because I don't have time yet, and my third one is missing time. So I'm going to use my third kinematics equation. Zero squared equals 15 squared plus 2a y final, right? I know y initial is zero. I don't need to bother plugging that in. Let's make sure that we do the algebra correctly here. Sometimes we forget that we're going to subtract that 15 squared to the other side, right? We need to make sure that that happens. I got roughly 11.5 meters. Tell me if that's something that you guys had. Okay, good. With these, this second and the third equation, you see how one of them is one half A and the other one is two A, right? Be really careful about not mixing and matching those, right? I see sometimes people try to plug in one half A on this one, but. Okay, so we have, let me make sure everybody feels good about that calculation. Did we have a, about 11.5 come out there, right? As we're doing these problems, I think it's really important that you do them in your calculator along with us. Watching is not the same as doing, okay? So we need to make sure that you are plugging them in as we go so we feel comfortable with that. Um, so we've answered the first part of our question, how high it goes. How long is the ball going to be in the air until it reaches their hand again? So that would mean I am solving for what variable? I need to solve for time. Okay, so give me some thoughts about how we could go about solving for time here. Yeah. Um, solve for time on its way down and then add it to 11.5. Okay, but if I solve for time on the way down, that would be seconds. So adding it to 11.5 wouldn't give me a total time, oh, sorry, right? Not, not 11. Okay, now I'm, 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 I, I'm, on, I'm on feeling what you're saying, but you're not quite there yet. Yeah. Can we use what we have now to solve for time in the first half and then can we change the VI to the negative? Okay, we're close. We're getting closer. Yes? I have a question. How do we know, like... All right, as long as our path is symmetrical, I, I call this shortcut. So we call it solve for the time on the way up, and then we multiply it by two because it's going to take the same amount of time to come down. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we're going to solve for the time on the way up, which means I'm still using this set of information. I can use my, you're welcome, I can use my first kinematics here for the shortcut method, right? I don't really care how far it travels. I know that my velocity final is zero, velocity initial is 15 plus A times time. And so I'm going to take 15 divided by 9.8 and I get T equals 1.53 seconds. Okay, when I say 15 divided by 9.8, I'm assuming I subtracted this over, and I've got negative 15 divided by negative 9.8, which is the same as 15 divided by 9.8. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm assuming we're doing the math there on our own. Um, so is this my total time? I have to multiply it by 2. This is the time on the way up, so I multiply it by 2 and I get about 3.06 seconds. That would be my total, the way up and the way down. Okay, very good. Questions with that? Here's what a non-symmetrical situation might look like. Let's say that, again, I'm on the tower. I throw the ball up, and it's going to land there. That would be non-symmetrical motion. So to solve for time here... I might have to do a little bit of extra work, okay? But we'll get to that as we go through, okay? I might have to do a little extra with that, okay? We'll get to that. All right, any questions with that? I'm going to call that the shortcut method. That means we solve for time on the way up, and then we multiply by 2. It only happens when the motion is symmetrical. Symmetrical, good. All right, a couple of things. Um, velocity and acceleration are not always in the same direction, no matter what. Acceleration is negative 9.8. Um, at an object's highest point, what's our velocity? Zero meters per second. But what's my acceleration still at that point? Because does gravity ever stop working? It does not. It's a little counterintuitive, right? Because if we're at rest, it's hard to think about accelerating. But gravity never stops working, 
right? So it would still be negative 9.8 then. So that acceleration causes me to start speeding up then as I move in the negative direction.